Welcome to our Reading Month Caribbean Contemporary Classics Week, sponsored by Hoda Education. I am Jameson Alfos, and it is an honor to be your moderator for such a prestigious Hoda Education event. The theme for Reading Month is All Hands on Deck for Literacy, and we are indeed privileged to be bolstered by an invaluable sponsor and partner such as Hoda Education. Four students from schools within the education community have been selected to read excerpts from the Horda Education Caribbean Contemporary Classics Collection. This is a collection of vibrant stories overflowing with life and the acute observations about society. In addition, each student will provide a personal reflection on the text followed by the recommendation. Please stay tuned as you are enlightened. Gwyneth Harold is a writer of young adult fiction the book, Bad Girls in School, is a Horda Education Caribbean Contemporary Classics which addresses issues young people face such as broken homes and teenage pregnancy and how they can overcome those challenges. Let's listen to 16-year-old Janique William who is a fourth form student at the St. Joseph's Convent Secondary School. She believes that reading is a hobby that anyone from any walk of life can indulge in and that it is one of the most amusing yet beneficial ways to pass time. Additionally, she takes pleasure in reading not only books or novels, but also poetry. The book Bad Girls in School was written by Gwyneth Harold. This book's main focus is three delinquent students, Tajika, Caledonia, and Katrina, and their one-year journey in the ILU with Elaine Miko, their new school librarian. The ILU was a temporary program that Elaine and a school board chairman, Canon Price, formed to reshape the three students and prevent Principal Slip Torrington's wish of expelling them from their school Redeemer College for Girls. To begin, I will read an excerpt from Chapter 7 of the book, entitled Unhappy Holiday. Caledonia had on a less outrageous outfit of blue capri pants, a plain red t-shirt and simple black sandals. She had a natural hairstyle with a bang that hung down the sides of her face and low to her eyebrows. However, her face was heavily made up and her lipstick matched her shirt. Elaine decided to confront Caledonia about her blatant disregard for punctuality. Miss Natal, please explain why you are nearly two hours late. Caledonia didn't even look up, but mumbled, got up late. You knew a week ago that we had an eight o'clock session and you were reminded every day. Are you still sitting here behaving as if sleeping late is a reasonable excuse? Caledonia already filtered Elaine out of her hearing and was gazing out at the playing field where the track team was practicing. The principal announced that she would be allowing some extracurricular activities to return to the school in January, and the track coach took that as a license to start training athletes during the Christmas break. A group of class 3 athletes were running a fast lap, girls who were in her age group and whom she knew she could outrun with better times if she were given the chance. She had competed in track since she was seven years old, had the medals at home to prove that she was good. On the first day at school, after vacation, the sight of the track around the hockey field made her heart race. In recent times, running was the only thing that she did well, so she depended on it to make her feel good about herself. Her exclusion from the team made her unhappy and angry, and the least inclined of the three girls in the ILU to do any work. Caledonia Natal, I am speaking to you. Elaine had stood up, all 162 centimeters of her in flat sandals, and leaned on her desk. She was going to get under Caledonia's skin today and force her into action. She was going to employ some tough love. However, Caledonia was also feeling tough at that moment. All her frustration became focused on the fat woman in the loud floral dress in front of her, and she released it. What else do you want me to say, miss? Listen to me. Young woman, this lackadaisical, don't care attitude is why we have to be here correcting work that you should have got right in the first place. Everything that is worthwhile starts with a lot of discipline and effort, something that the three of you need plenty of. Caledonia looked at Elaine and thought this rude and out of order woman needed to be put in her place. Caledonia knew a lot about discipline and effort, meddling in sprints, as well as stretching herself to cop the long jump took a great deal of focus training over many long hours. She sneered at Elaine as she spoke. If you have disciplined so much, then why not go practice some of it upon yourself? Don't be fresh. Elaine was bubbling hot now. She would show the girl who was in charge here, but Tashika sensed what was coming and intervened. 
Caledonia don't mean nothing, miss. She just ran up her mouth. Caledonia, however, was not taking help from anybody. She stood up and cut her pose with one hand akimbo and the other one pointed at herself for emphasis. Fresh? Her voice went up a couple of notes higher than usual. Don't worry about me. Me fresh a long time. It's honest me decide to be now. Is you always see that we must feel free to talk with mine? Well, look upon you already. You don't think the exercise is part of discipline? We just nyam down the place and don't even take a walk if you make even a little food burn up. It's laziness that and indiscipline. And that is why you stay so fat and shape so bad. In this excerpt, we learn that Caridonia, one of the three girls, has arrived late to an extra class that Elaine, her teacher, had set up and had a heated exchange. Caridonia, during this argument, made rude remarks about her teacher's weight. She does this as she herself is hurting and she does not know how to deal with her pain positively. Unfortunately, as a result, she passes her waj or rage onto Elaine resulting in both of them being hurt in the end. I believe a lot, if not all of us, can identify with Caridonia's actions in this piece, as we all might have acted similarly in the past when we did not know how to effectively deal with negative emotions. The next two excerpts that I'm going to read are also in chapter 7. The first one is a conversation between the three girls after Caridonia's outburst, and the second one is a conversation between the three girls and Elaine in which they apologize. That was really stupid, Kali, Katrina said quietly. So what? If Miss don't like people if you call her fat, then she must go lose weight, Caledonia insisted. Yeah, I agree, Miss need to get her butt on a treadmill. But we never have to tell her like that. Tajika never really liked to get people upset to the point of crying. I mean, you could really see that she felt bad. People always try and feel make we feel bad, Caledonia retorted. Them do it, and them say that they care. Miss does care, Katrina insisted. She cares when she carried all that video equipment over here. She cares when she begged for us to be able to eat lunch by the canteen with the rest of the school. She cares because she's having this extra class for us during the holidays. She still does her library work, plus takes care of us. We know that. Caledonia sat down again. Well, I never mean to make her feel so bad. Yes, you did. You are feeling bad about yourself and you took it out on Miss, insisted Tashika. When no one else said anything, she continued. You see my father? Him is a drug addict. He wants to stop bad, bad, but it gone too far for him want to control. My grandmother curse him all the time, but it don't help. Him just feel bad and gone again. Him even sat one rehab program, but drop out after a while. Tajika's friends knew about her father's drug problem. They had seen him at school the time when he broke three chairs in the art department trying to climb high enough to pick some mangoes. He caused a little scene when he came on the compound because the security guard did not believe that the emaciated man with glazed eyes, shaky hands and mumbling speech could be a parent and did not want to let him inside. Tajika took one look at her father coming up the stairs to the principal's office and knew that her grandmother had deliberately sent him to embarrass her. Since then, all the teachers and a lot of the students knew that she had a cockhead for her father. I did a bad thing, Tajika, her father had said to her once. I try to get better for you though, believe me, I try. His mother, Tashika's grandmother, continually berated him, saying that he was a disappointment and a weak. Tashika agreed, but she believed that he wanted to do better all the same. Miss is just like that, Katrina said. She needs help to get her weight under control. Maybe we can help. Tashika lit up. Here was an opportunity to organize something and be in charge. Yeah, I mean, she looked out the door to make sure that neither Canon Price nor Miss Miko was overhearing her and then she dropped her voice even further. Miss Fat too looked bad. But she never do us anything more than try to help out our situation and we could do something for her. Kali, you know all about exercise and diet. Why don't you draw up a program for Miss to follow? Then we all try to get her to stick to it. Miss, we feel really badly about what just happened. Kali did not mean to get on like that. It's just that she's having a really hard time right now. Are you alright, Caledonia? Was all Elaine could manage to say, trying not to reveal her sudden happiness in a smile. Yes, miss. I never really meant for it to come out like that. But, Katrina went on cautiously, don't take it the wrong way, miss. But you have to agree that you need to do something about your weight. Tashika entered at that point. 
We work it out already, miss, and especially Carrie, because she know about exercise and things. The school playing field is the best place to do it. And miss, Katrina was ready to put the final touch to that project. You have a cute face and everything already. Kai would have to check you if you lost some weight. These pieces that I just read show us that the best thing to do after acting rationally and wrongly is to own up to your actions and identify where you went wrong, just as not only Kai Dunia, but the other two girls in the program did. Tajika even used her own experience with her father's addiction to allow Caledonia to see that it is important to be kind to people and their situations. In addition to apologizing for their actions, they even created what they thought to be a master plan to help their teacher lose weight. This reveals that the girls are actually thoughtful and kind, although their behavior may say otherwise. Now, I read an excerpt from the final chapter of the book, chapter 12, which is entitled Metamorphosis. I am finally in grade 10. I am back on track and it feels really good, even though life is a bit strange right now. My mother has gone to Barbados to pursue her dream of being a lawyer. I am so proud of her. When she comes back, I will be in grade 12, three whole years away. I managed to convince her to let me live with my father. He said that he wanted to look after me and would not go away on any long tours. She did not want to say yes and had actually got a place for me at boarding school. But when my father turned down his annual two-month contract to manage a reggae explosion roadshow that goes to the Far East, Australia and Africa, she believed him and pleaded with him to keep me out of bad company. She left two weeks ago and it has been heaven. My father has interesting friends, mostly musicians and record producers and dancers. I managed to get rid of his most recent girlfriend, who is a backup singer. Didn't like her. More than anything, he wants to please me and show my mother that he's a good parent. I would be in charge of the house as well as of him if it wasn't for Cosmo. Daddy is easy, but Cosmo doesn't trust me one bit. My form room is upstairs in Unity Hall, next to the principal's office, and I can see right across the hockey field down to the ILU. It is not a classroom anymore because Shorty got it back. I went down there a while ago to kill some time until classes started, or maybe I needed to say goodbye again. For all of us, because I am the only one left besides Miss Miko, who is in the library full time now. I spoke to Tasha a couple times over the summer holidays. She called me from New York City. Tasha's grandmother told her that she could not manage a teenager at her age and stage of life, and it was time for Tash to go and live with her mother in America. So Tash got what she always wanted, but she found out that foreign was not what she thought it would be. I am calling you from my room that my mom set up for me. It has a TV and everything, she said to me the last time we spoke. That's cool, I said. You meet your neighbors as yet? No. My mom works a lot, so I have to stay inside the apartment. All the time? Well, the people there are kind of strange, so she says I must stay inside until I know the city better. Okay. Katty, I can't believe that I am in the great New York City that people talk about so much. It is really dirty where we are, and the people are poor, even though they don't look it. My mother works three jobs, including on Sundays. She has a lot of nice clothes, but this place where we live is not so nice. She took me to the school that I will be going to. It is all inside of one big building and no playing field. I never thought that I could miss looking over to the bush on the north side. The caterpillars must be coming out about now at school. Yeah, but your mother is okay, right? She's glad that I am here. I hear her talking on the phone and telling her friend them that her friend is here and that she's going to be a senior in high school. She talked like going to school is a big deal. She worked very hard and sent money to some other family that she didn't have in Jamaica. Katty, do you know that she say I need to get her job after school and on weekends? I'm used to working in my grandmother's bar, but that was a fun thing most of the time. Plus, we don't have a helper over here. So, it is going to be my job to clean the apartment and the laundry. Life in America was all I could say. We were silent and she brought up Kali. You hear from her? No. I called her house up to yesterday and her mother said that she had gone to visit relatives for a while. Lie. I know. If you could have go back to last year, what would you do different? Tell somebody. Like who? Miss Miko? Kati would have hate us if we do that. She wanted to do it her way, but she was not managing by herself. She needed help, and I feel bad now that we did not do it. We were silent again for a bit, 
then Tash spoke again. Cathy, my cell phone credit is going, so I soon ring off. You can do me a favor? Yeah, sure. Go look for Mama for me. I call her almost every day, but she missed me. I don't want her to feel so alone. You can? The phone beeped, and I quickly said, yes, yes, I'll go up there and look for her. But she was already gone. I planned to keep that promise to visit Miss Redcar Monday. When I went down to Shorty's change room, he had left the door open, so I went inside. He did not take out our desks and chairs, but just pushed them to the side and set up an old mattress on a board and some blocks. The room smelled of him, partly because of the mattress and partly from his sweaty clothes hanging from the nail on the wall. I had some scratching and shuffling coming from under the house. I wondered if after all that we did for Whitey, build a nice little doghouse if she really went back under there. I went outside and stooped to look under. Sure enough, Whitey was there with, I couldn't believe it, puppies, about five of them. It can't be healthy for her to be there in that dust. I had to get Shorty to do something. I wonder who is the father of those puppies. I never saw any other dog around there. Oh, my mobile phone is ringing. I forgot to leave it in the vice principal's office. The caller ID number came up as private, but I would answer it all the same. You reached school yet? Kali, where are you? I am all right. Where is that? With Marlon. I don't know what to say after that. Her step uncle has a name and she's living with him. It makes me think about my own mother. When she got pregnant, she was sent to her grandmother in the country. She never, ever lived with my father. But that is what Kali is doing. What is the plan, Kali? Well, we want to be together. So I'm going to have the baby and then he will pay to send me to private classes so I can continue my education. It sounded like a rehearsed statement. Does he still make you the drugs? Come off that, Katty. Me die with him now, so everything, Chris. What about Chuck? Mrs. worried about you. Listen, let's link up. I have to go now, Katty. Give me your phone number, Kali. Tell Coach hello for me. She gone, leaving me shaking. Out of the three of us, Kali had the hardest time. But like all of us, she still had choices. What she did with them was definitely within her control. That's the bell to announce out of school. Well, I got my day and my new life to begin. Still, that call from Kali and the call from Tajika the other day jarred my nerves. With the help of Miss Miko, Tajika, Kaidonia and I carried each other through a difficult year. And it feels wrong that they are not here today. If this were the movies, we would all be together the three amigas living happily ever after. All for one and one for all. But last year taught me that life is not very predictable. A lot of things are out of my control, like the parents I have. But there is still enough of my life where I can make choices, like who my friends are and the kind of person I want to become. This excerpt tells of the face of the girls once a new school year commences after they leave the ILU as Katrina reflects on her present day life. All three girls had to make huge changes in their lives. Tajika moved to the US to live with her mother. Caledonia became pregnant for a step uncle and had to move away. And Katrina, who in comparison to the two girls had the least significant change, moved in with her father after her mother's departure for school. Katrina also reflects on the fact that life is not always predictable and a lot of things are out of her control. However, she can make smart choices to achieve the future that she wants for herself. This piece shows us how fast each of the girls' lives change, and in essence, how anyone's life can change in a short period of time, and how far each of the students has gone in their own personal journeys. To end, here are my final thoughts on this book. In my opinion, Bad Girls in School is a brilliant, engaging book that covers a wide variety of issues and adversities that are not only faced by girls in the Caribbean, but all over the world. None of these issues that society may deem as inappropriate or touchy was sure-coated or watered down, and this allowed me to further grasp all of them. In addition to bringing awareness to these issues, the book, in a sense, guides young female readers as to what should be right and wrong to do in difficult situations. Some examples of important topics that Gwyneth Harold has spotlighted in this book are teen pregnancy, sexualization of young girls, addiction, depression, broken homes, self-esteem, confidence, and family relations. I strongly believe a lot of young girls can relate to the storylines in this book, as I myself could relate to some of them. A particular detail that stood out to me is in chapter 12, 
when Caledonia expressed to Lane that the girls were always on their own even when they were together. It reminded me of another statement I've heard, we're all alone in this together, and how it correlates with the story being told in this book. Although the three girls attended the ILU together and spent time with each other almost every day, they were still all alone in their personal struggles and the only ones who could ever experience exactly what they were going through. This goes hand in hand with the end of the book and in a sense gives an explanation to readers on why these girls did not end up happily ever after together at the end. The book is an excellent portrayal of this concept as it displays the harsh realities of life not only as a teenage girl but in general. I'd recommend this book be read by all teenage girls and any other person who would like to get a glimpse of what it's like to be a teenage girl in this day and age. Furthermore, I would suggest this book to anybody who likes drama books and to anyone who would like to expand their personal world bank as it has a wide variety of colourful and intriguing vocabulary. I also believe that this book can be read by beginners as it is an easy read and only has about 150 pages and 12 concise chapters. Visit the Harder Education website at www.hardereducation.co.uk to check out the other Caribbean contemporary classic texts to find titles that may appeal to you. Becca and her family are always clashing over her disobedience. Can you relate to this situation? How do you handle conflict with your family and friends? To obtain a copy, I urge you to visit the local bookstores, Delivery Express and People's Discount Book and More both located in Cash Trees, and Books and More located in Miku. There, you can choose from a range of titles in classic contemporary fiction from the heart of the Caribbean. Also, look out for our upcoming book fairs at People's Discount Book and More on Victoria Street, Cash Trees from May 19 to 21st, and Books and More in Miku Village on the second week of July. You can also visit Horder Education website at www.hordereducation.co.uk.